Don't let people Ben Simmons you. Shalom, this is the brother Bud. You're back here once again. Before I get started, like always, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rachachachachachach. The wellness to my teachers, the elder apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the whole Fulek, man. Yeah, don't let anybody uh, Ben Simmons you. We was going into this topic at camp last night, and I wanted to further expound on this uh, topic. And this lesson is for you uh, younger brothers, you new brothers that's coming into the faith, or you brothers that may be confused on your lot or the position um, when you're coming into these camps or when you're coming around the brotherhood. You may not know where you fit in at or, or what's your purpose there. Um, it all starts with confidence, though. Now, I'm going to play this uh, video, and this is, you know, my, uh, my fellow brethren um, that's familiar with basketball. They already know what I'm about to play, or they're, they're going to be familiar with this video. But this guy, Ben Simmons, a couple years back in the playoffs, um, he did a play that, uh, you know, people say cost them that game, which... Which in reality, that's not true because, you know, any true coach will tell you one play doesn't lose a game. Unless it's unless it's a rare occasion where it's a tight game the whole way and you do, you know, you blow the game with the last shot or you turn over at the last minute. But, you know, one play usually doesn't win, um, lose a game. It's many things that happens, you know, that causes your team to lose. So they blame Ben Simmons you know, for this game being lost in the playoffs, a game seven elimination game. And um he and he was never the same after this um instant instant. So I'm gonna play this video um and further elaborate and of course go into the scriptures. Simmons they cleared out for tapping his way in. Spins on Gallinari gives it up. Oh he was right there and a foul as Thibel goes to the basket. Simmons, they cleared out for him. Tapping his way in. Spins on Gallinari. Gives it up. Oh, he was right there. And a foul as Thibel goes to the basket. Boy, Simmons, uncontested, had a layup, but he leaves it for Thibel, who makes something out of it and is uh, headed to the You see, you know, he's backing the guy down. And um, he's he's going uh, to. Well, but that's when you know that the game the is in your head. That's a he passes the ball right. When he had an open uh, dunk, right? He had an open dunk, and um, if you know anything about this guy, so everybody was mad at him because he passed the ball when he had an open dunk. You know, right here you can see the lane is open after he spins off this dude. He has an open dunk, but he then passes. Spins off Gallinari, gives it up. Oh, he's right. Right. <clears throat> but anybody that's familiar with this guy, Ben Simmons, you know that his game has always been a pass first player. That's what he's great at, all right? He's great at um, surveying the floor. He's great at being a floor general, setting up plays um, for other people. He's not a, uh, he's not known as a scorer. He wasn't known as a scorer in high school. He wasn't known as a scorer in college, all right? Now, I'm about to tie this in to the truth. Now, they've been telling this guy after that, you need to learn how to shoot. You need to shoot more. You need to be a shooter. You need to be a shooter. But that's not the gift he was given. He wasn't given the gift of being a shooter. He was given the gift of being an all-around talent. He he rebounds well. He defends well. He passes better than damn near anybody else in the league. All right? So it was on Ben Simmons to have the confidence to believe in his gift and not listen to the outsiders. Now, applying that to the truth, brothers, when you come into this faith, you have to learn who you are in the truth. All right? The scriptures tell us about putting off the old man and putting on a new man, renewing yourself. And in the process of doing that, I'm going to get Romans the, third, uh, the 12th chapter. In the process of doing that, putting off the old man, you have to take time out and learn who you are in the truth. You can't, just as soon as you learn your Hebrew, is like, you know, like I was saying at camp, put on put on a friend's T-shirt and just run outside and, you know, scream and qualm. You have to take the time out and learn what the Lord has called you into and who you are and what is your gift. And how to perfect how to perfect your gift, right? This is a uh, Romans chapter twelve verse one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of by the mercies of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah, 
which is your reasonable service. All right, and making your body a living sacrifice is not just talking about going to camp. That's it's about your whole life that you live now is a sacrifice unto the Lord. You sacrifice the pleasures of the world. You sacrifice the things that you want in return, you know, to please the Lord. Because you're focusing on your growth in the truth. You're focusing on your growth in the spirit. You gotta realize you may not always you may not always get what you want. All right. And if you need some, it may take some time before the Lord decides to give it to you. All right? Verse two. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh So as you're being transformed and renewing yourself in the mind, you're learning all over again. All right? Your babes desiring that sincere milk. You're growing. And you have to learn who you are in the truth. A lot of people don't even know who they are. You got people that live in the world. They don't know who they are in the world. They're lost in the world. Shit, everybody that's living in the world lost. But you can't come into the truth and then still be lost, all right? Scripture state the truth shall set you free. You're found, all right? So you have to learn who you are, know who you are, and be confident in it, right? It says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as the Most High have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Because every brother has a different measure. You got some brothers with, with a lot of faith, with a lot of courage, with a lot of confidence, confidence in the truth. You got some brothers that may not have as much confidence, as much faith. Does that make that brother less of a brother if he believes? No, he's been given a measure. Should that brother feel outcasted? Should that brother feel down? Because certain instances and situations may reveal that he doesn't have as much faith as another brother or courage or confidence. No, you should still you should you should have the confidence that you do believe, though, you know, if you're sincere or not. And if you are sincere, you should have confidence in that. You shouldn't be comparing your measure of faith to another brother's and getting down in the spirit. You should have confidence in the, the portion you've been given and run with it. All right. Do videos according to your measure and, and be on fire with it. Right? Study according to your measure and be on fire with it. And the Lord will multiply you within your lot, within your portion. He'll make you greater than you ever thought you could be. Verse, verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Not everybody's going to be a shooter, a Kobe Bryant. Not everybody's going to be a, 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 a Michael Jordan. Not everybody's going to be, you know, a, a Shaquille O'Neal. You need your rebounders. You need your def defensive players. All right? You need your energetic players that just bring, uh, you know, the energy. You need your rough and tough players that will rough up the, the opposition and have the other team scared. <laughs> All right? You need your floor generals, your point guard, to control the pace of the game, to set up plays for other guys. All right? Everybody has their own position. That's why in, in basketball you have a point guard, a shooting guard, a small forward, a power forward, a center. Everybody has a different office. You have to be confident in the skill set that you've been given. All right? Even when you're, like, building a character on, like, these basketball games, these um, these NBA games, they have, like, certain archetypes, uh, certain archetypes you can build. All right? And, it, and it's just different builds. Like, a guy could be a defensive specialist, a guy can be a sharpshooter. A guy can be an athletic dunker. Right? Those are different skill sets. Within the truth, you have different skill sets. You have different offices. You have to have confidence in your office and, and, and grow in that and dominate in that. See, when you have the confidence in your skill set, you're able to, able to take over the world. Right? You look at a guy like Stephen Curry. Stephen Curry was, was not highly recru recruited. You know, because I watch, you know... Uh, Stephen Curry when he was in college He wasn't highly recruited Coming out of high school That's why he went to a lower level school Davidson right? He didn't go to a top D1 school But look at Stephen Curry now He's the greatest He's known as the greatest shooter of all time Why? Because he took he was When his draft came When it was time to draft him And when it was time to recruit him Out of, um, out of high school The same thing When he was going into the NBA They said when he was um, Leaving high school And going into college He's small He's skinny He's not fast He's kind of slow but he didn't let that get him down. He said, I'm, I'm going I'm to have confidence in that. I can shoot better than anybody on the damn court. And I'm going to perfect that and dominate in that. And look where it has gotten him today. All right? Let's go back to Romans chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, so we, being many, are one body. 
are, are one body in Yahweh HaMashiach, and every one members one of another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us. So every brother is given a different portion of mercy. Every brother is given a different portion of faith. Every brother is given a different gift. The Lord loves variety. He don't want us to all be android, humanoid, robot, robots like Esau's trying to make. All right? Everybody uh, karagma up with the MOTB, with the same thinking process. No, the Lord, the, Lord, the Lord likes variety, differentiating. All right? So our gifts are different. Our measure of faith is different. Different. The mercy that hey, you it may be a one brother that may be able to uh get away with uh something that you can't get away with in the eyes of the Lord, because we have different portions of grace and mercy that the Lord gives out too. Look at uh King David's sins, look at King Solomon's sins, all right, the sin of adultery. Wasn't put to death on the spot for that. He was given a, a different measure of mercy and grace, even though he, you know, in the in the future, you know, he was punished for that. But according to the law, you were supposed to be put down right then and there. But the Lord, what does the Lord say? He will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. You know, so you have to just be confident in what the Lord has given you and, and run in that, right? It says, uh, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, right? Or oh, and, and, and what I was just saying about mercy, that don't mean you can just do what the hell you want to do because you don't know. <laughs> the scriptures say don't tempt the Lord So you don't know if you're one of those guys That have a longer leash You don't know how long your leash is with the Lord That's why you're always supposed to do your best You could have a very short leash You could be, you could have a, you could be a brother That has a very short leash with the Lord For stuff you did in your past like, Or just because that's your lot you can, have, you can be a brother in the eyes of the Lord That have a longer leash These are the things that we don't know But we know we've been given a different pr proportion of these things So so you have to come into this truth Knowing that you ain't going to be the same as as the other brothers in your camp you're going to be different and you can't let that get you down and make you feel like you're an outcast right because that's how them demons play on you and they have you thinking that brothers are hating on you despising you when really it's just you lacking confidence and and, and faith and belief in your in your portion that you've been given it says whether prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith you teach according to the portion you've been given and you know what you've been given you know the you know where you're at in this thing when you come. You can feel it, but it's when you fight it that things get hard for you, right? When you fight it, you start bucking up against orders in, in the camps. You start acting a certain way against brothers. You start uh, uh, thinking brothers are against you, all right? And you start turning against the body because now you're making yourself an outcast because you don't you don't have confidence in, in your in your gift, or you may feel like you you deserve a different gift. You may feel like you should be in a, a, a position another brother is in when the Lord didn't give you that position, all right? Like I said, at camp, you may you may have a brother in the camp that knows, that has way more knowledge than the leader of the camp, but the Lord didn't set you up to be the leader of the camp. He set that brother to be the leader, leader of the camp for a reason. The brother may not be as knowledgeable as you, but he's able to deal with the brothers under him. He, he may be more brotherly, right? He may have more patience than you to deal with brothers. Right, not everybody, not everybody's meant to lead. Here it is, you got all this knowledge, but then when brothers get up under you, you don't know where brothers at. You don't know what brothers doing. You you don't know how to communicate. You're lacking in other places because you wasn't given that. But see, when you try to get up out of your position, up out of your order, up out of your lot, that's when things get difficult for you, man. All right, and that's when the truth becomes a burden instead of a labor of love. Okay. Since, since I've been mentioning since I've been mentioning that word confidence um, a lot, let me get Hebrews the tenth chapter because the reason why I went into this Ben Ben Simmons aspect and applied it to the sports world, which is what the apostles before us in the scriptures did, they applied a lot of a lot of precepts from, from the sports world. All right, likening like the, the the truth is like a race. All right. Um, yeah, let me see. Let me see in Hebrews too. But yeah, the reason why I applied this to Ben Simmons is because you saw you saw him lose his confidence after that. You saw him lose who he was. You saw him lose faith in the gift that he's been given in the world. But in the truth, you can't allow that to happen, or you're not going to last, you know, long. Hebrews chapter ten, verse uh, thirty-five. It says, "Cast not away therefore your confidence, which have great recompense." <clears throat> 
which have great recompense of reward. Right? So cast not away your confidence, all right, in the Lord. Cast not away your confidence in your in your portion, your lot, your position you've been given, the measure of faith, the measure of grace you've been given. Cast not away your confidence because you have a great reward in continue, continuing in the penny that you've been given. Right? For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh ye might receive the promise. And it ain't about you at the end of the day. That's another thing. Brothers, it's not about you. It's about the body and the will of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh All right? Whatever, he, whatever time he brought you in, whether he brought you in in the year 2022, whether he brought you in the year 2014, whether he brought you in in the year 2007, he brought you in that time period for a reason. And if you and if you stood the test of time throughout these years, it's through the will and mercy and grace and power you have by Shemel Shah. And obviously you've learned the battle, you've learned the fight, and you've learned to have confidence in, in the in the faith and the position that you've been given. The lot and the portion you've been given. Alright, so for you new brothers, you younger brothers, you brothers that's having trouble with, you know, oh, how do I fit in? I feel like an outcast. I don't know who I am in the truth. You know who you are. You just got to have confidence in it and stop comparing yourself to another brother because we have different gifts. We're all different. All right. <clears throat> Let's get a Psalms 138. You know, even when Ben Simmons actually started playing this year because he skipped last year, he was dealing with, uh, he said he went into mental depression after that. Even when you look at his first, you know, game, he had a very bad first game, which that's to be expected, you know, with a long layoff. You're nervous and, you know, shit like that. But you should have never went through a mental depression if you had confidence in what you've been given. All right? You, the, the Lord gifted you with a, an amazing, strong, you know, athletic body. You have the wisdom and knowledge to, to dominate on the basketball floor. Have confidence in that. What got you there, you got there to, for a reason. Don't lose track of that because the naysayers want you to be something that you're not. All right? The naysayers aren't on the front line. People that's talking shit ain't on the basketball court. The people that's talking shit ain't on the highways and byways. All right? They not even in the game. There's no reward for them. There's no trophy for them. <clears throat> this is Psalm chapter 138, verse 8, and then I'm going to wrap it up. It says, The Lord will, the Lord, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh will perfect that which concerneth me. The Lord is going to perfect what concerneth you, what he gave you. All right? Whatever portion he gave you, Whatever measure he gave you, he's going to perfect that within you. And you'll become great. You'll become a leader like he wants you to be. You'll be admired for the things that you're doing within your lot, within your portion. All right? Thy mercy, O Yahweh Bashem Yahweh endure forever. Forsake, forsake not the works of thine own hands. You know? So I just wanted to do this lesson. You know, you know, for brothers that may need to hear it. Don't let people Ben Simmons you, man. Learn who you are in the faith, grow in that, have confidence in that, and continue and endure in that, all right? And if you should do that, like the scripture say, make your calling and election sure. You've been called for a reason. You've been called for, we have confidence in that calling, all right? So with that, I hope that I hope this lesson was um, edifying. Until the next time, I say shalom.